So in this movie, I just want to briefly describe how to access uh, record formats that are attached to symbols and produce reports and things like that. And to start with, I've just placed a couple, placed a couple of uh, symbols that have records already attached to them. These are from the Null Library in Vectorworks. And this is the a, a, a maze uh, chair, and this is a, a, a Gary round table. And these are hybrid objects, which means that they have a, a 2D and 3D representation, which you can see there. And if I select one of these, you can see that it has a record called Material Takeoff attached to it, and then various pieces of information attached to that. Um, so a description, manufacturer, part, uh, quantity, um, and some other fields here. I'm not quite sure what these are. So to start with, this record is probably not what you want, so you would want to create your own record. And to do that, you can simply, in the resource browser, either double-click in white space or go to New Resource. Sorry, go to the Current Drawing. Um, and new resource and we would go to record format and here you can name the record format whatever it is call it FF and E and then you can add uh, additional fields so this could be manufacturer and this is going to be a text field and we can leave it blank if we don't want a default value and basically, you can just keep adding these fields here to create these, uh, the equivalents of these things here. So, you know, manufacturer, you might have model. And again, you can put a default value in there if you want. Uh, you might have color. And notice that there's a few different types of fields here. So if you wanted to put a cost value in here, you would put that in as a number field and you might format it to decimal with two decimal places for example and put in a default value you need to do that for a number field uh, and so on so basically you build up the record like this and then once you do that in your file you'll see here's the record we just created and here's the one that was uh, created or came in with these two particular objects so if, uh, if we were wanting to attach this custom record that we've created to these objects and get rid of this one, being symbols, what you would do is you would edit the symbol. So we double click and edit the 2D or 3D part. And importantly, we now click to deselect. So nothing must be selected in here. And then we can uncheck this one here Yes, and then we can check our custom one and we can then put in the custom information we want. So that was null um, and it was Gary Fogg, whatever it is color, silver, and cost, who knows, $500. So that's now entered those values for this symbol. So we can now exit out of that symbol. And if we did the same for the chair, so we can edit the chair, edit. And again, making sure nothing is selected, we can Click this box here, make sure that we click yes. So we've disconnected it from the original and now we're going to add our own. And again, we can put null this chair, whatever model it is. Color. Black or whatever, 
cost fifteen hundred dollars. I don't know what they cost. So we've done that. We can then exit the symbol, and you'll see now that because these symbols were previously placed in the drawing, they still have the old record attached. And this is why it's important to do this stuff at the very start of uh, when you're developing these symbols. So if we delete those symbols and then put fresh copies back in the drawing, you'll see that our new record is now attached. So that was the table and the seating is in here. So if we put this in here, you'll see that our new record is now attached. Now if we wanted to then uh, nest this the table and, and maybe a few of these chairs. Let's go ahead and just duplicate this over here. Uh, so we've got this group now. So we'll create this into a symbol. So we'll go create symbol, uh, table and chairs. And we'll leave instance in place, plan projection center. And so now we have this symbol, which is a combination or, or a nested symbol of other symbols. And if we placed a few copies of this in the drawing, we could then get a report on this by going to the Tools menu, Reports, Create Report. And we're going to go objects with record, and we'll choose the record we created, FFNE. We'll add all of these fields over here. So we have them there, and we can drag them around, put them in the order that we want. And importantly, we need to click on the Options button here and choose Search in Symbols. Okay, this is a new worksheet and we could summarize items. We'll look at that in a moment. We'll just leave that off at the moment. Click OK. And you'll see that now we have a report that is listing the quantity of these items that has been placed in the drawing and the cost of them here. Now, generally when you create a report like this, you only want to list each item once and then see the quantity of those items in the drawing. So if we, first of all, let's get the quantity. We can do that by, in this row here, this is the formula row, the database row. We can type an equal sign and just type count. Hit return, and you'll see that it's returning one for each of those items. And we'll call this one count at the top here. Okay, so we've got count. Uh, let's just reduce the width of these all a bit, make it a bit more manageable. Right, so now we only want to list these once, so what we're going to do is to select this row, then take the sum icon and put it into the model column. And when we do that, you'll see now each one is only being listed once, but the quantity here or the count is being um, correctly reported as is the total cost. But if you, you'll notice that this is adding up the cost of six of these so generally on this line you'd want the item cost so this should probably say item cost and so that we get the item cost here, we need to select this row again and put a sum icon in this column too. And you'll see now we're getting the individual price of the items listed here. Now if you want to move these um, around, you can do that. You can select this column and put the cursor right near the edge. See it changes and drag this up to, I don't know, you might want the quantity. This probably should say quantity QTY. Uh, the quantity here, and we can drag these columns around. We've got the color. We've got the uh, the item cost. So if we wanted to add an extra column here, we can put the cursor on this bottom right-hand corner, drag it out, make a couple of extra rows. 
So here you might want the total cost. So we can go total cost and then this cell here we're going to say okay this cell needs to be the quantity times the cost. So we click in this cell and then up here we type an equal sign. We can click in the quantity column, so quantity. And you'll see it's put C2 in there, which is C2. And we do a times, which is an asterisk. And then we put the cost, so we click in here. So basically this is saying this cell is going to equal C2 times E2. This column times this column. We click the little tick box there and that's going to give us the totals for all of these and the, the very uh, the grand total is up the top here and if you wanted to have that grand total say displayed down here then we can put equals click that cell there equals F2 click the tick and we'll get the total there. Now you can format these cells so these are cost cells for example so we can select them I can right click here choose format cells we can go to decimal if we wanted to have two decimal places and have a dollar sign in the leader we could do that and you'll get that you probably don't need decimal places but that shows you how to do that um, and basically that's it uh, it's reasonably straightforward and the key when working with symbols of course is to make sure you attach all of the data before you start putting them in the drawing and if there are any, and really you should attach the data, um, you can either do it to items that are on the drawing, but then you're going to have to put them back on the drawing again, or you can actually right click and edit from the resource browser, edit the symbol definition itself before you put any on the drawing, and do the same thing again, making sure it's not selected, coming in here, clicking on FF and E, and so on. Once you do have uh, a record linked to a symbol, you can do uh, what's known as link text to record. Um, this is a bit more tricky when you've got nested symbols like this, but let's go in and look at how this might work. So we'll edit this chair symbol here. So we'll go edit and we'll edit the 3D component just roll that up for a moment and let's go to a front view and create some text here and I just need to put some blank text in there like that and format this text to how I might want it to appear so we might want it to be 12 point text you know whatever the font is and so on and with that text selected, and it's also quite a good idea to make this uh, horizontal alignment to the center so that it expands equally in either direction. So when you have this uh, selected here, you can then go up to the Modify menu and choose this item link text to record. And it's then going to allow you to choose a record and the field value for this record. So let's choose model here, for example, and click OK. And you'll see that it has now been populated with the text Me's chair. So if we exit out of that symbol, by the way, this text which is there now, should be visible in 3D, which it is. And you can see the problem with this because the text is there, but obviously this chair is round the other way and so the text is back the front. And if you're looking from this angle, it would be hard to see. But there's no way to actually have that text always be uh, right reading. But if you wanted that to appear on a plan, then 
you can now see that text just up here in the symbol preview. If we edit this again, edit the 3D component, and there's the text. This is in on a 3D plane. If we switch this back to a screen plane, so this text will now appear in the 2D part of the symbol. So we could put this wherever we wanted to, exit the symbol, and now you're going to see that that text appears in the, uh, the 2D symbol, but not in the 3D symbol. So it's, it, it can be quite useful, but it, it has its limitations. And you'll see if we rotate this left 90 degrees, then you know, the text is going to stay in the orientation it was before, which again is not great. If we rotate it 180 degrees, then the text will correct itself, but it's not going to be correct in, uh, in all views. Well, I suppose that's OK, like that. And this text is, is hot linked, so if we went into this symbol and we go to the data tab and this said Mies chair, so if I just change this, put say XXX after that, see this text has changed, so this will respond to whatever value you use up here. Um, And it's only going to update symbols that you place in the drawing after that point in time. So this is the, the thing about linked text to record, or sorry, about, about text and symbols, I'm sorry, records and symbols, is that you've got to get all of that information in up front 